London, Paris, New York, Milan, and now Cork. Since 2008, Cork Fashion Week has been steadily making its mark on the fashion calendar. Hi and welcome to this week's Cork County Matters. Now also coming up in this week's show, I'll be heading over to Connor for the underage athletics competition. But before all of that running, strutting and posing, it's time to meet up with the ladies behind all of that glamour, Emer and Vivian. Now we're here at the Perry Street Market Cafe and there's so much hustle and bustle going on for Cork Fashion Week. Now this is a fantastic event. Emer, I'm here with Emer and Vivian and they're from Lockdown Models and you started this whole thing off. Can you tell me more about how it all began, Emer? Um, certainly, so about seven years ago, Viv and I, we've been modelling for uh, nearly 17 years, giving our age away now, and we just used to come across really amazing fashion designers through the shows and these designers would just get on a flight and they would go to London and Paris for opportunities and we just wanted to really do something here before they went to celebrate them so it kind of grew organically from there I mean uh, we hate to say the R word but the recession hit and we really wanted to use our contacts and our production and our business at lockdown to inject much needed uh, finance and vibrancy back into retail business so that's how the shops came into it then we did fashion shows where we had all the local boutiques involved and I guess as I said it just grew organically from there you know Cork is a really stylish city so I think we're lucky yeah, I was going to ask you that. What is it? What is it like here in Cork, Vivian? Is there are Cork women very stylish? Now you you think they are? What's your opinion? Yeah, I definitely think um, I've been to loads of events in Dublin, and believe it or not, where actually we make way more effort. Um, I just think people really make the effort to go all out, and it's kind of quirky. And since Upper Lane came to Cork, um, we've way more choice with Topshop and River Island, and then all the little vintage boutiques around the city. And yeah, there's loads going on. Because Upper Lane has been a fantastic addition to the city centre, hasn't it? And it's always busy as well. Do you have fashion shows then kind of based around Upper Lane or how does it work? We do every year. We do um, fantastic. Like what, what I love about Upper Lane is they do free events for the public. Today is free. It's all fashion insiders, bloggers. But every year then for spring summer, we do a show with them live on Upper Lane, massive, huge staging catwalk right up through Upper Lane and all of the shops put in clothes and you get everyone coming to those shows from little kids to grandparents because that's who they cater for. And what about Cork designers, Vivian? Do you get the opportunity to show Cork, showcase Cork designers or are there many around? There are, yeah, there's uh, amazing colleges, uh, design colleges in Cork, um, like the Mallow College, College of um, Tailoring. Um, so we had the design show on Saturday night in the Imperial and it was out of this world, like the creations were just amazing. So we're going to see some pieces here today by Carl Caroline Matthews and Valerie O'Shea, um, so we'll get like a taste of what was there on, in the design show on Saturday night. And is it something that a lot of people are going towards now, veering towards fashion design? I know like even my own daughter, she's 12 and she's big into her fashion. Now. Like, is, it a, is it a viable career for somebody in Ireland particularly? Mm -hmm. It is really, um, like we were just talking about the collections by Valerie and Caroline a while ago and they're actually really wearable collections, so I could totally see them in a boutique in a year or two. Um, so it's, it's, it's much more accessible now as well and I like, don't know a lot of designers like we had Aidan Sheehan over for the design show um, now he's designing and retailing in London um, so he was the winner from the first year uh, so it was amazing to see him on Saturday night but they, a, a lot of them do go away um, but that's what we're here for to try to keep yes. them in Cork and promote them and give them some form of platform in Cork. And Amber, you mentioned there now it, it began seven years ago. How has it grown now over the last few years? Has it been getting bigger every year? I know you said the recession kind of slowed things down, but how is it now compared to seven years? We've just been so lucky. I mean, um, Cork has a great cultural, um, you know, root here. And as a result, I mean, we have photographers, makeup artists, hairstylists, not just the business owners. Uh, we have lots of creative people behind the scenes that I like to kind of call it our tribe that we've met along the way. And we really grown a lovely little family that um, of creative people locally that we call on each year you know and that just gets bigger and bigger every year the audiences get bigger the venues have to get bigger um, and Viv and I are just getting more and more grey hairs <laughs> as we go but we wouldn't have it any other way you know it, it, it's great. So Eamor how does Cork compare to the rest of the world obviously London, Paris, New York they're all well known but how does Cork compare? 
Well, as you said, London, Paris, New York, I mean, the best fashion weeks in the world are and have been always backed by Mercedes-Benz and we're hugely honoured that two years ago uh, Mercedes-Benz and MSL in Little Island uh, backed our Little Fashion Week and helped us grow it to the capacity it is now. So, I mean, they only put their seal of approval on the best. They have the highest of standards and we just couldn't be more, uh, more honoured that Mercedes-Benz MSL um, have backed Fashion Week this year with us. And are there any other counties in Munster who they, is there anywhere else in Ireland who they'd back? Uh, no, it's just our little fashion week. I mean, there are fantastic fashion weeks all over the country and they all have their own little unique thing. And I guess Viv and I, um, the first year we had fashion TV come to film our events and when that went viral and it went out across the world, it just gave us an international platform to promote all of the designers that had come on board with us and things just grew, you know, from there and Mercedes-Benz and MSL got in touch. So, you know, we've been really blessed. They are the best of the best to deal with. You're very welcome back. Now we're still here at Perry Street Market Cafe, as you can see by the fridge, full of food to feed everyone when they get hungry later on. And I'm here with Natasha. Natasha, you're the stylist for today's show, but you're also the stylist for Opera Lane as well, sorry. Yeah, so I've styled the show here today um, from our Opera Lane collections, and then I also work as the personal shopper for Opera Lane. So tell me about the show that's going on today. So we're just kind of getting a little glimpse of all that the lane has to offer, but I've kind of honed in on three specific collections. So we're going to see the first thing out is a lot of like really chunky knitwear, a more casual kind of daywear look. Um, and then the next collection is a little bit 60s inspired, um, a lot of tailoring, like colour pop, that type of thing. And then lastly, we're kind of giving a little nod to the festive season, which is just around the corner. So lots of really like glittery, sparkly things, um, jumpsuits, really high heels and a little bit of fur. And is it hard then to narrow it down to three certain kinds of looks? Because you obviously want to appeal to everybody. Is that a tough decision to make? It is, but I think from being around the shops every day, I kind of have a good idea of what's in there. So I'm always trying to pick like the three strongest looks. Um, and also to show people how you can do day wear on the lane and like a more, you know, even a kind of worky things. And then you're really going out stuff. So, you know, once you've kind of got that, not too bad then to, to narrow it down. Now Yvonne, you're doing this, you're from Peter Marks and you're doing the hair for this event. Are you doing it for any other event or is it just today? Um, we have done um, all the hair for Cork Fashion Week and um, we're doing today's event and um, also the fashion shows this evening for Miss Daisy Blue and Paper Dolls. So tell me about the style of hair that we're going to see today. Okay, uh, today's event here in Perry Market, uh, Street Market Cafe, we're doing um, a very natural boho look, um, featuring clips on the side, um, something everybody can do at home, um, very natural out of bed look, pop in the clips, uh, give you something that you know we can do and also the, uh, the client can do at home as well. Um, paper dolls and um, today we have paper dolls and we have the Miss Daisy Blue. Um, vintage, so we're going very vintage, uh, victory rolls, soft curls, and very glamorous then for our paper dolls ladies. So when you're doing hair for an event like this, do you, you obviously then have to take into consideration the style of clothes that are being worn, would that be right, or is it just your own concept? Uh, well, what we've done, we've done a bit of research with what was going on through the catwalks um, and try to uh, fit it in really with what was going with the clothing because you have to have something that's going to suit. Today's look was very much you're going to be wearing, you know, uh, high street stuff, so something that could, young people can wear. Um, and, you know, Miss Daisy Blue, you have to have something that the hair fits in with the style of clothing. You're not going to have big back combed hair and <laughs> curls and everything coming out for, for certain shows, like so, yeah, I can see how. Change it for, the different, for the different styles of clothing. Oh, fantastic. And would you work then very closely with the girls? you know, who are styling the event today and would you come up with the concept together? Yes, we did. Um, this is our first time in Cor uh, working with Cork Fashion Week um, this year. So, yeah, we worked very closely with Vivian and Emer um, to come up with different ideas that we felt would work. We gave some suggestions and helped what they wanted to see um, on their catwalks. And we kind of came up with teamed ideas together and took some of their ideas and our uh, ideas and collaborated them together and came up with a few different ideas for the catwalks and for 
for the shows this evening. Now, James, you're a men's fashion blogger, but you're also a model here today as well, so you're a jack of all trades. Yeah. Tell me about, okay, I had a little bit of a dig a while ago about men's, okay. men's fashion, so <laughs> you have to defend the male population of Cork and Ireland. Okay, so men have just taken a little bit longer to come around to the whole idea of dressing every single morning and thinking about exactly what you're putting on and actually putting thought into it and not being afraid of expressing yourselves in, in within your clothes and that kind of stuff. So it's just taken us a bit, little bit longer. So with, I think men are just becoming more and more aware of what clothes they can wear every single, every single day and not being afraid to express themselves within their clothes and you know, be interested in fashion. It's not, it, there's no kind of stereotype behind it anymore. Everyone is into fashion and, you know, like, it's, it's just, just an everyday thing with even people like One Direction. You know, young guys are getting into fashion more and more from a young age of 15, 16, 17. You see, I was starting to wear skinny jeans, which, you know, five years ago, they wouldn't have been wearing them at all, you know? It would have been a kind of a very, um, they would have been too scared to kind of do it now, but no, it's, everyone is doing it now, so it's brilliant. I think it's fantastic. You see, my theory, I'll tell you my theory now, is that I think they're afraid to put an effort into how they're looking. Because maybe the men in my life, perhaps, yeah. right? <laughs> because they're afraid to look too put together, and that's what, I, maybe it's men of a certain age. I think younger guys definitely, yeah. you can see, they're experimenting, but it's just it's slightly older guys. Yeah. Are you seeing the older guys taking a bit more risks? I definitely, I definitely am. You know, I think there's a lot more guys who, like I said, it's just taken them a little bit longer to, to come around to the idea of dressing really, really well and getting into your fashion, getting into what brands suit you and what, you know, what shapes suit you, what colours suit you, and you know, it, it, it just, it just, it's just going to take them, uh, take them a while. I think the age gap is kind of getting smaller and smaller with people who are into fashion and not into fashion. I think everyone is into it now really so and I think women are pushing their guys more and more to do it so I think keep pushing and you know.